Wrestling. Wrestling fans, I'm Dan Marotti. Why you only go to three? Because 2-1 is when you're supposed to do it in your head without saying it. I never knew that. You never knew that? Can you write that down for me? If, if you need me to. Yeah. All right. Hey, MJ in the house. Oh, we're still talking. <laughs> I, I didn't even know that. All right, we're having fun here. It's Thursday night. It's 9 o'clock here at MWF Studios, downtown Melrose, Massachusetts. A brand new Wrestling Insiders. Party with Marty is next. I'm going to wear this. Wrestling fans, we explode into Christmas for the ninth annual Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest. A human sea of superstar guests have come to MWF Studios for live interviews, tributes, and virtual autograph signings. The good news is, if you miss these superstar signings, we have individual autograph photos available as well as all-inclusive VIP packages throughout the season. If you want them for yourself or to give us a holiday gift for Christmas, Get the order in by December the 19th. On Christmas night, we'll reveal the winner of the massive Christmas week mega raffle where one lucky fan wins an entire jackpot of prizes again to benefit the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlux Toy Drive. 2020 has been a brutal year for the economy as well as our toy drive efforts. We could use any and all the help you could give us. Be part of the professional wrestling community. If you're going to take part in any toy drive this year, let it be one where we update Santa Claus's GPS in honor Paul Bearer's memory. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com now. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world, wherever you may be, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Inside is here on Thursday night at 9 p.m. It is The Party with Marty, Dan Marotti, along with my co-host, my partner in crime, MJ up in the house. Um, do this, because you, your intro yeah. is like wherever you may be watching this. Yeah. There's a guy, it comes on right after Skip and Shannon. Yeah. It's called Undisputed. Mm -hmm. I can't remember his name. Mad Daddy, you're supposed to help me. But uh, do the phone thing again. Do my phone yeah. thing again? Yeah, ask, ask what show comes on right after uh, Skip and Shannon. What show comes on after Skip and Shannon? Undisputed. It's too late. What show comes on after Skip and Shannon? Undisputed. It's not giving me much to work with. What show <laughs> comes on after Skip and Shannon? Shannon, Undisputed. Undisputed. Nothing. Your phone sucks. Well, maybe the information we're giving him isn't so hot to try. But anyway. I bet it works on my phone if I can get it charged. You lost, where's my phone? Uh, it's over there in the corner as it's been for the past few episodes. I got one. <laughs> it hasn't moved. Hopefully it's charged after several it, weeks. It was up to two. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> if it's not charged by the end of this, God help us. Yeah, it's been on for like three weeks and it's got 2%. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's continue to talk through the world. This, oh, wait a because, minute. Mad Daddy, you're in trouble. You, But uh, you know what i tell you? He reminds me of one of my best friends, Rod Defied Foyce. Yeah. Rod, let me say it right. Rod Defied Foyce. And, um, I mean, they, they fashion they fashion savvy. Yeah. And Rod used to order his clothes out of a catalog. He didn't go to the mall and shit. Mm. My brother up there, man, I love him to death. No, uh, he is he a very stylish me individual. so much of Rod. And that means you got to keep me in line with my damn looks, man. I know I got the damn Mad Matt. What was that thing you said? Mad Matt or Rat Matt or something? The Deborah McMichael. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> now, let me ask you this. Do you consider our, one of our other uh, studio associates, Glantz, to be a stylish Why individual? Why are you always messing with Goli uh, Goliath? I'm not messing with him. I'm just asking a question. What was the question? Do you think he's a, st a stylish <laughs> individual? Man, he played baseball and he wrestled. And he hooked. And I, not well, only that, what else was hooked? he? I was like in the streets. No, like grappling. Oh, well, I he was a high school wrestler. I never heard it called hooking. You never heard it called hooking? No, or stretch your you ass. Didn't leave in <laughs> you didn't live in England long enough, I guess. They don't call it there. And there was something that, else that he had a feather under his cap for. It'll come to me, but. Oh, the, the, one, the one black girl was pretty, because he's white. And a lot of white people, they, black girls, me, me, that's all I date. But um, 
Man, I can't get this flower to stick. All right, well, you'll get it in at some point. Can I just stick it up here and then we'll cover Just put my it on head. the table, that's all. There you um, go. Blend it in with the fab all flop. Oh, yeah, by the way, John Sr. John Sr. Sr. Uh, Fabo? Fabo pop. This stuff is good. <laughs> All right, wrestling fans, we continue to barrel through 1989. We were talking about No, the, we didn't. We barreled the through first, nothing. That's for sure. <laughs> it's like molasses, not barrel. A barrel of molasses, maybe. But yeah, but it's, it's fun memories for me. It is. It's a lot of great memories. you probably bored to death, but I'm sitting here. The, I'm getting paid, right? Yeah. I'm getting paid. You sound like Bobby to, Heenan on primetime. I'm getting, I'm getting paid, paid for this, right? To remember shit. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun. It's like a trip yeah. down memory, memory lane with a paycheck involved in one, green. One time. God damn it. All right. Well, we discussed no, the first Saturday Night Tomato. We, we was in England. Yeah. Again, no, no, we was in Spain. And, um, uh, man, I'm sorry I can't wear the flower. I would put it right here or something, right. but I, I ain't got no <laughs> hair clips. Some of my girls should call and tell me how to do this. Yeah. I'm going to try to twist it up. No, if it I, I don't think putting, we're going to have any luck with this, Marty. I, I, I don't could think be so either. I'm going to put a hat on. Nah. All uh, right. Well, hat. Where's the hat? For, oh, you, you were talking where's about my, England. Where's my phone? I have. I know where your phone is. I don't know about your hat. But <laughs> Where is my hat? I'll just wear it. All right. Um, but England, we, we, yeah. We, we was in, uh, I think it was France. Or France, I'm sorry. Because they, 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 they voulez vous fonds, they, uh, you know, that language. As I think, voulez vous chasse, that's why. Yeah, something, something like, that. like that. Yeah. yeah. This is a damn air freshener. Where did you find it? In the bathroom. Oh, well, then maybe you should have left it there, but that's all right. I was going to put it in my air because well, I got to right. change. We do weeks after weeks after weeks. And I've, I've only, I've got more than two changes of clothes, but not that many more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just so going to Tell here. us about France. The Steiners. Lex Luger and me, we 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 up in the room. You know, during the day, we 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 uh, you know passing the time away because we had to go work that night. The the two hookers we, we knew they were already occupied. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope that didn't come out wrong. But um, <laughs> Scott Scott, it was mainly Scott. I love Scott. That's my brother. Can I tell? I, I got part of what I do with this tooth. Put it in the cup? I don't know. Are there any? I don't no, know if the I cup's empty. Drink that. Maybe. I'll just stick it right, yeah, right there. I'm yeah, sorry, that's, John Cena. That's good. Violate let's, the family. Let's, let's plug him up because I'm going to lay this on top. I hope you don't Maybe mind. just take a piece of tissue and put it in that and we can throw it in the garbage. You know what I'm going to go ahead and do? And I hope you all don't damn yeah, show this all over uh, the internet. That's cute. Yeah. I'm going to take this tooth out. It's a paper tooth. I'm sorry, uh, Senior. And, and Couldn't have happened to a nicer guy with old Johnny. But. Hey, look, when, if it, but I got knocked up, not knocked out. I got the tooth knocked out by uh, training my kids. And, and I was showing them how to take a post, and it, it not hurt that bad. And I knocked my tooth out doing it. So I have to take toilet paper. I have to take right. this right here. I should throw this out. No, please, because we're going to have to clean it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And then you take toilet paper. And you... And you eat it up. <laughs> and then you try to put it in that slot. All right. Well, in the last episode, we were talking about... And the problem right. with it is the, the toilet paper is white and your teeth are yellow. Yeah. <laughs> well... Wait, I think I almost got it. You almost got it now. I'm rushing for y'all. I'm not rushing. This is almost like a YouTube tutorial on how to fill a, a broken tooth. It, it, uh, 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 ghetto style. Ghetto <laughs> style, yeah. You know I live in a trailer. You do? No. Nah. Oh, all right. Well, I I don't know what it is. I've never tapped on the wall. I don't, it's supposed to be on a trailer. You tap on the wall and it's hollow. I'm not every aware time, of that. Every time I fell into the walls, like because I used to drink a lot, and sometimes I would lose balance. I got these badass ankles. And I don't mean tough badass, bad they're horrible. Yeah. And, and I lose balance. <laughs> well. And when you're drinking, you lose more balance. <laughs> you need a cane like me. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. You okay? Blame Vaziri. Well, how's Devon feel about it? He's never known me as anything but, which I think is good. The older brother did, which yeah, is... Yeah, but he sees normal people. Huh? He sees normal people. To him, it is normal. 
So oh, for that's you, all. Yeah. Well, he's, not, he's never known me as anything. But. See, I ain't, I ain't got but one kid, and she might not be mine. Yeah. And I'm not going to say her name, Bianca. I'm not going to say that. No. Um, but she, you know what? She called me daddy one time. I ain't never been called daddy. I melted. <laughs> I'm, she called me daddy. And, and she might not be mine because the mother even admitted, like, okay, it's between you and one other person, which is better than Ann and Georgia over there in Denver. It's between you and five other people. <laughs> now, what about Gina, who, who in this area, who claims G you may she may have a little Gennetti? Say again? Gina that says she may have a little Gennetti. Did she say that? Yeah. I don't even know her. She said she has the C-section to, to prove it. You've been saying that, but yeah. this is a true story? I don't know. I don't well, know no, your I mean, relations your with her. Do I believe it? No, I didn't oh. ask you to believe it. Because you know I ain't going to lie to you. Right. D, the front desk girl, yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> what happened with D, the front desk girl? We had a good time. At the hotel I got a better or somewhere room. else? I had a better room. They got a better got room. got their ankles. Yeah. And she even, yeah. But not Lisa. Who's Lisa? Lisa was kind of the older one that was there the other night when I checked That's in. That's that big. Will you yeah. stop? Lisa, Lisa wasn't rocking. She's a sweetheart of a human being. I think it's a long time since Lisa's rocked. You, you see, you missed the damn waitress. Y'all don't. You and Matt, Daddy, damn, that's a big old. I hope it looks like bubble gum. I, I ain't it. doing good on this one. No, I think you maybe took a little too much, a little <laughs> too did. much paper. Uh, you you know, could have got a whole set of teeth out of them. Yeah. Usually, what you do for y'all that might need to replace teeth, you get the you, well, you get well, you get ah fuck, you get a little you know how they, they, they perforated, perforated. Yeah, per, I can't spell that. Neither can I. Oh wait a minute, I hear the. Uh, the helpful individual himself, he's doing something with There's Matt hey, Daddy. There we go. Matt Daddy, baby. What up, though? All right, Matt Daddy. He's doing a hell of a job in there tonight. I ain't got no teeth. All right, well, anyway, back to the did world you, of professional me, wrestling in did 1989. You tell me one of them didn't have no teeth? You, no. Um, gosh, shit, I remember it. He didn't have, oh, the sheik, he didn't have no teeth. Oh, the sheik, when he was here, he didn't have any teeth in, yeah. But he, you were doing a lot better than him. He was missing almost all of them. And, yeah, I'm just missing one. Look, yeah. Yeah, You're doing all right. Gum. All right, back to the world of wrestling 1989. Brooklyn Brawler Steve Lombardi gets the first push of his career as a Brooklyn Brawler. The Red Rooster was turned baby I face. I wouldn't call that a push. Well, Bobby Heenan uh, wound up accompanying the Brawler as his manager for a little oh, bit. Oh, I didn't know that. You didn't know that. Oh, that was a push there. Yeah. I didn't know that. Gave Lombardi I was there. Little... I was so worried about the rats that Steve Lombardi was letting out the you know, just chasing for all the damn production girls and guys. Guys were like, ah, 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 <laughs> jumping up in the air and the rats would run under. They were just going the same direction. <laughs> they, they were all running away from each other. So you're the talking rats. about the Harlem sewer rats? Yeah. Well, that was a year and a half later. What's wrong with me? No, I don't know. You've changed. Not me. All right, Brooklyn Brawler for the first time, a guy that was enhancement talent at best for six years all of a sudden now. He's getting a little bit of a push. He's got Bobby Heenan. He's got a gimmick name. Did you see any potential in Steve Lombardi more as a maybe a mid card talent? Even though I don't think he really ascended that far. He's he's a Detroit boy. Yeah. That Not Brooklyn. Yeah, that means he's yeah brawler. Um, that means he's street smart. And do you think that was good for him? I think it was good for him in the streets. <laughs> well, there are a lot of people that have alluded to the fact that maybe he Steve. alluded? Maybe Steve. How do you spell alluded? Uh, next. Maybe <laughs> the brawler did a little behind-the-scenes brawling to get that push. One time, and I shouldn't tell this, so yeah. I probably won't. But name, just, I didn't do good at all on this one. Sorry about my one tooth. Yeah. Did Steve use his gap to get I'm, that I'm, push? I'm about his what? His gap. Ah, oh, damn. <laughs> I ain't answering it that way. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what happened one time, what had happened was, that was a good switch. I saw that one, bro. He's good. All right, yeah, what he's do we got? very good. What had happened? Damn. That's bubble gum. It ain't a tooth. It's bubble gum, yeah. Uh, let me chew it up, though. Um, we was in... Damn. You got any liquor? No. If you had some, would you give me some? Yeah. Or just go get some. 
Uh, well, we don't have any. No. No, the liquor store in the street. I saw it on the way here. Oh, you, a place you've become good friends with. You've been there almost <laughs> as much as you've been here. It's a girl that works there. I'm not surprised. Um, what were we talking about? The rats? St something about to do with Steve Lombardi. <laughs> so, um, I, to me, I love him to death. Yeah. God damn. It's my boy. Um, man, do you, do you, we have so many troubles right now because you got, you know, everything. The TSP, no, CR, what is CIPS is yes. my condition. Crips. You got to go through that. I got to go through this and in the back now. And she, look, I can't. Oh. Did what? maybe Steve Lombardi go through a little bit of pain to get that push? Uh, <laughs> one time we was over in, I think we were in uh, uh, Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And you know, I, I'm sorry, I'm trying to make a tooth. Y'all don't want to see a damn snaggle tooth bastard. Is a bastard all right, sec? That's fine. Bastard. <laughs> but, um, we, uh, Switzerland. I forgot. Oh, oh, Switzerland. Yeah, Steve we, we on the we on the elevator. Me and and the girl I was with over there, man, she was pretty, sweetheart. She was almost like a Germany girl. Germany mm -hmm. girls are pretty, but they strong. They want to carry your bags. And because Katya, my girl Katya, she would always say, "German women strong. I'll get your bag." And it's like I don't need another man in my life. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm I'm sorry. That's if you're, fine. I, no. Are you are you straight? Yes. I know you got a you. wife. Well, no, but she was something like that. Yeah, but you can go both ways. Her or me? What, 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 anybody. And I guess you could, yeah. Well, I'll tell you why. Terry Garvin, remember Terry? Yes. Terry, Terry was straight gay. One of the lead members of the cream team. <laughs> what was that? The cream team? Yeah, I missed it. Well, him, Mel Phillips, and select oh, others in the oh, company. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> I never heard him called the cream team. <laughs> <laughs> damn, this tooth. But Terry Garvin, one time, I got in trouble. You imagine that. I got in trouble because we were talking about it on an episode uh, prior to this. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called an 86-it or something where, you know, you, you got to throw somebody out of the club. Yep. And when we used to get tickets back in Central States, me and Dave Peterson, DJ Peterson, I love my brother. Rest in peace, my man. I'm still loving you. Um, he he would we would get tickets for speeding. Mm -hmm. As soon as the officer leave, throw it out the window. He say '86 that shit. We throw it out the window. Well, goddamn, I had excuse my language, I had like six unpaid tic uh, speeding tickets. Wow. And, and we got to tell a Harley race on this, but remind me. Now that's your job. All right. All right. And 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 so uh, we was going to Independence, Missouri. Uh, it, 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 I think that's no Fort Leavenworth. You see where the prison's at. Michael Vick had to go there. Mm -hmm. um, but we had to go and, and do a, a show in, in front of the prison, which I'm all, I'm I'm comfortable in prison. <laughs> yeah, that's fucked up. But I am. I'm comfortable there because it's it's playtime. You meet other people like you. <laughs> but so um, they had a road check, you know, like uh, the police, you know, the block thing, and they check your ID and shit and see. I think it's they need money when they do that. But um, I had six. I had six. They probably had six or seven or eight. We just threw them out the window. We go 90 miles an hour like Harley Race did, mm -hmm. and, and and just throw them out the window. We ain't go pay this shit. I'm from Georgia. He was from Missouri, which St. Joe, St. Joe is Missouri, but he didn't give a shit. Out the window. That shit caught up that night, and that was gonna be a good payday because the prison gives you a given price. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not how many show up. They bought the show. It's like twenty thousand. Um, they bought the show. And, and you entertain you know, the prisoners. Like I said, I was at home. And, um, but, gosh, damn, I gave them a license. It was legal. I had a legal license at one time in mm -hmm. my life, maybe twice. And I gave them the license, and they look at it, and all of a sudden everybody's like this again. Get out. What the? And I wouldn't even remember, and we threw all the tickets out the window. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seven unpaid tickets, and they got guns drawn on me, and they made me get out, and they took me to jail. They put me in the back of a paddy wagon. And, and I will get back to the gay part. And I love all my gay people. 
What's that damn movement, LG, gay? They keep these? adding letters to it, but I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, I'm way off. But, uh, what? <laughs> but, but uh, yeah, yeah, so they put me in the back of a paddy wagon with a couple other dudes that were fighting each other. They're handcuffed in front so they can they can kangaroo punch each other. And, and, and they were doing that, and the police knew that, and they were, they were doing what happened to that Freddie. What was that dude's name that died in, 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 in um, Baltimore? Freddie Fre Gray? Freddie Gray, remember the, they said he died yeah. after being put in back. I mean, he's, look, man, if the police pull you over, or if the police try to, just take the punishment. Don't run. You only get shit, shot in the back because you're running for a reason. I agree that sometimes you get nervous because I think I talked about it on, on, on the earlier uh, edition of us. Mm -hmm. Hey, if y'all can go back, go check it out. It's in the archives. It's in the archives. How you say it? Archives. How you spell that? Next. Next. <laughs> um, so now I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, so we was in the back of the paddy wagon. Freddie Gray kind of brought some of the shit on himself. The only reason I can say that is because I know one of the people that were there, but <clears throat> Brett, oh shit, that hurt my ankle. I gotta get my ankle fixed. I know. Lee McCluskey, Dr. McCluskey, the best in the world. All right. Hey, Whopper, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm in the back of the paddy wagon, handcuffed, and these two guys are trying to headbutt each other. They're still hating each other. And the police knew it, and they were like, mm, 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 and we're bam, bam, bam off the walls. And where's my hat and my hair? Behind you. What's he doing there? And, and, and so they, I don't know if that's any better. But, but oh man, they were, they were bang, 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 you banging off the walls. And they actually said, they said when we get there, the first one we see throwing a punch is going to get an extra charge. Mm -hmm. So they was like, y'all fight all you want. And they're up there in the damn slamming on brakes and turning left and right. All I did was the unpaid tickets. I mean, that's not a major, you know, I didn't steal a purse. I didn't kick somebody in the face. I didn't do nothing. But they didn't pay my damn traffic tickets. And I'm sitting in there with guys like mm, mm, kangaroo punching. And the cops are, yin, bam, boom, yin, bum. What are we doing, Mad Daddy? How many minutes? How much? That many. You're sweating. I am? Yeah. No, I'm not. So get back to the, the Kansas story. No, the let fans. me talk about that spider. you got spider arms now coming out. Do I have a spider on my head now? All right. They're having a party. All right, well. Yeah, but so, yeah, they beat the shit out of us. <laughs> when I got there, all I did was I didn't pay a few tickets, so you got to go in. And we were going to get to the gay part. Um, so it was Independence, Missouri, which is right next door to Kansas City. It's all like... Georgia and Phoenix City and the Chattahoochee River and Victory Lanes. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> you've changed. And and so uh, I, I, I'm i in there. It was like $700 to bomb me out. And, and at Miss Leavenworth, it was going to be a big ass payday because, you know, it was a bought show. Sold show, yeah. yeah. And, and I missed that. I didn't even care. Like, shit, just get me out of here. I called Terry Garvin. And Terry, you know, Terry's both ways. I'm sorry, sweetness. His wife and I still stay in touch because I love them so much. And the kids, and Tarney and, and little mama, um, I love them, um, you know. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, just saying. It, it, I think everybody knew this. The reason I say that is because he come and got me out of jail that night. They had to come get me out of jail. By me, I was like six or seven hundred, like a hundred per ticket, seven hundred dollars. And he took me at first to his house. And hey, hey, sweetness, I got to tell the truth. Nothing bad meant by this, but his wife, and I knew, he, I knew him to be, you know, gay. Mm -hmm. um, or bi. What's the difference? Maybe he said bye to the wife. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Mad Daddy, or, or y'all. No, uh, bi means interested in both. Both. Yeah. Well, what's gay? Just one? I think just one. Oh, okay. Uh, he was by then. Yeah. Was he, he, yeah. And, and, um, but I went and met his wife's sweetheart. I want to say her name, but she might not like that, so I'm not going to. And we stay in touch to this day. And the kids. And, and, but they're not kids anymore. They're grown. They're like 30, 20 something years old. 
That's crazy, ain't it? Yeah. How kids grow up and become adults and people and you're still there. <laughs> but anyway, she, we, we, we went to her the house and I was surprised that he had a wife with kids. I, I, I figured, you know, guys. Yeah. <clears throat> and we sitting at the table like two in the morning because it was late, you know, when he come and got me out of jail. We're sitting there and, and she goes, she told Terry, she goes, Oh my God, I want to introduce him to some friend of hers. I forgot the name. Let's just say Don Marie. Wait, no, no, don't say that name. Uh, Don. And you know Don Marie? I know the one that was an EC Don. Yeah, yeah, I don't want to say that name then. Oh, all right. But uh, introduce me and um, to her. And this was Terry's wife. Mm -hmm. And and I'm thinking, I thought they were. I thought he's gay, and usually you marry gay, like you know, the McMahons did, you know. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and, <laughs> and and but I was I was you know like I'm learning like oh okay y'all marry each other to cover or to have a normal family life, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like you marry the yeah. opposite sex because a guy sticking the thingaling in a guy's ass ain't gonna produce a kid, as far as I know. I've never heard of a thingaling being able to do that. Yeah, me either. It's a thingaling, ain't it? Yeah, it's a thingaling. <laughs> See, that's Linda, yeah. <laughs> and Vince. But that's all, all right. right there and, and so I got to tell you with the bushwhackers, that's the story I got for the book. Can I regress or digress? No, let's finish the Terry Govan one so we don't but, call but, too but off we got to talk we'll about the bushwhackers. We'll get back to the bushwhacker. All right. with, with the limo when they right. called Linda McMahon a dyke. But um, <laughs> we, we were, that, we, maybe we shouldn't let them Maybe know. we shouldn't, yeah. yeah, we'll save that one. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'm sitting there and I heard her say that and I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm new to the game, right? I'm like, oh, y'all know each other? Like each, your own kind? And she said, she, she goes, oh, oh, oh I'll, I'll take it back. Um, his wife said, the girl, the Don Marie or whoever it was, oh, she's great in the sack. That's when I was like, <laughs> okay, wait. <laughs> Let me catch up right here. So you do girls, he does guys, and you all are married, and you got kids. And it's sort of like I asked the question, like, oh, so you all know about each other. And she said, the only arguments we have is who's the queen of the house. <laughs> so I started lightening up and then wanting to see pictures of the girl she was trying to hook me up with. But um, but I guess the, the whole thing was like you, you're, you're married. That don't mean you're not gay or bi. Now you're talking about me or the Steve Lombardi story? Where did Steve come in? Steve, I think Steve, Steve is, you do it, it began with I did uh, switch gears. Switzerland, yeah. Yeah, but because we was on the elevator and, and um, we could hear like uh, floor number two, you know, going, <laughs> there was only two floors. Mm -hmm. Do you know a hotel has to have more than one floor? A motel, just one floor? That's, did you know that? That's what it is, okay. Yeah, I didn't know that, that was and the now difference. You do. But. And so, um, and I don't know though, most, Motel 6 might have broke that. They might Yeah, they multi floored some of them. Yeah, I think so. And Red Roof. Well, you stuck me in that place and there wasn't no pretty girls there. That's an inn. Oh, so it's got to be a hotel, okay, yeah. or a motel. Hotel, That's, motel, there you go. Holiday Inn. All right, so back to Switzerland with Steve Lombardi. We heard him. I got to go wee-wee. You heard him? Yes. You hurt him or heard no, him? No, heard. H-U-R-R-D, heard. All, All right, be, well, we're going to take a brief right time back. out, folks. We'll be back with more on this crazy adventure that is Wrestling <laughs> Inside His Party with Marty. Stand Are by. we really telling this on TV? <laughs> fans, welcome back. Marty is a little bit more settled and calm now. I had to go wee-wee. We're going to go back to Switzerland as we try and... We're the brawler. Yeah. Why do you make me tell stories I shouldn't tell? Well, we're just trying to, to break down the, the career you had, some of the individuals you around take, you. Take your time on this line. Right. So what do we got? <laughs> so what happened was we was in the elevator. Or no, they were in the elevator. We Who was they? I ain't giving all names, oh, okay. but Brooklyn well, Brawler and Steve Pat Lombard. Patterson. Okay. And maybe even Terry Garvin. Okay. Terry, Terry, 
I love my boy Terry. I love him, but he didn't mind. He did had no problem with putting a dick in his neck. Yeah. I wish I didn't say that. Can we cut that out? Do you want to? I mean, it's truth. All right. Well, then, as long as it isn't fictitious, then that's fine. Like the bowling alley. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's a different story for a different time. But we're in Switzerland. We're in an elevator, and, and what's we happening? hear them. Um, they're planning tonight. You know, me and Sean. Was that with Sean then, or it might have been um, Al Snow? Could have been. Uh, you know, me and um, uh, Shane Douglas tagged for a little bit when Sean was hurt. But so, but it was one of them. I think it was Al, and and we could hear them in the elevators going up. We just missed it, like to ride with. Mm -hmm. You know how that it pisses you off. Like God damn, yep. I missed it by one inch. But uh, one second, and and then um, we hear a Brawler. He's like. Why don't we just do what we did last night? That was fun. I really enjoyed that. That's all. That's all we heard. But we all assumed, so they could have been playing cribbage for all you know. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. They might have been playing cards or some shit. But we all assumed because he and he said order a pizza and do the. I think he said. I think while we go and do the dirty. I think he said. Oh, do the dirty. I'm not sure. You're not that. sure, but potentially. Yeah, I, I, and I wouldn't lie to y'all, I don't know. You don't know. I know we heard that. I don't know what it meant. And What's I'll, doing the dirty? Also, before... What you got? You went on the bathroom break. You mentioned a scenario about the bushwhackers in a limousine. Now, bushwhackers... Why do you pull all the dirty stuff out of me? I didn't know anything about this. But you didn't tell me uh, in the people. Are you are you by? No. You've never been with a dude? Never. Ever? Ever. You've never put anything in your throat? No. Okay. No, anywhere, believe anywhere it or not. Anywhere else? Huh? Anywhere else? And nowhere else either. Hey, let me ask this. I did it at Al Snow, and it was so funny. Because I learned this in jail. When I was accidentally in jail for a little while. And um, one of the stories, the questions you get asked is you wake up from a dream. I'm going to ask you. All right. You wake up from a dream, and you got a dick in your ass and a dick in your mouth. Which one do you take out first? Is there a right or a wrong answer to that one? I don't know. Al, I asked Albert in front of fans one time, and he goes, Motherfucker. <laughs> Motherfucker, you got me. <laughs> which one? And then the fans were like, which one, Al? <laughs> Where was this? Huh? Where was this? Somewhere in New Jersey, right across the bridge. The, 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 what's that called? George Washington? Yeah. Right across that. Oh. Yeah, and some, some um, signing. Type signing. Oh. I think it was a Brussel Con spinoff, you know, because gotcha. it was during yeah, that yeah. weekend. Yeah. You went out calls asking that. We will. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you already know. <laughs> what went on with the bushwhackers in the limo? What happened was, we. <laughs> what had happened was, we was a little late in the limo. They sent a personal limo uh, to pick us up. I think it was just me. I think Sean had. Sean had special privilege. You know how they. Talk about white people have, which I hate, your, your privilege, shit. Grow up where I grew up and, and called it privilege. Grew up the way I grew up, called it privilege. That that pisses me off. I understand what it means. I understand what they're saying about right. white privilege. Fuck you. Ain't got no goddamn white privileges. The, the white privilege I got was getting beat up by the black kids. They did, only once. I won most of them. But anyway, um, we we were the late, so they sent in the limo. How the hell did we go? Bush white? No, the how bushwhackers did we get the are they in the limo? Off of, you know, Joe Biden, you can go to hell too. Why? How did we get to that? From, I I don't know. Man, you you're shifty. I remember the bushwhackers in the limousine and. Yeah. So they they sent a limo, per, their personal limo, to get us because everything was running late, and we got in there. It was me, Sean, that already had pers uh, white privilege. <laughs> I think he had Vince privilege, but he was already gone and whatever, you know, whatever happened there. It was me and the one of the Bushwaggers. No, actually both of them. And we're in the back of the limo, and their personal driver, it's their personal limo. <clears throat> and he was kind of moving slow, and we were, we were running late. And one of the Bushwaggers, I don't remember which one, Mate, hurry the hell up! Are you busy thinking about licking Linda McMahon's pussy? Hurry up! And I'm thinking, oh, you're fired. You're fired. <laughs> you just said that. 
And the limo driver says, okay, and then <laughs> sped on, you know, got us through the place, and nothing happened to the bushwhackers for saying. Oh, so they didn't call her a lesbian? No, no, for licking pussy, whatever that would be. Well, was and it I'm a, sorry, coach, I'm supposed to be classy. Was it a male or a female limo driver? The driver was a, a guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I was, I was just shocked because <laughs> you know the limo guy's going to go tell her and him, Vince. He said in front of another wrestler, go lick some pussy, you know, however he said it. And, and nothing happened. <laughs> they were still there the next day. If I'd have said that, gone. <laughs> There'd been another fire that she could try to well, keep I up with. Well, I don't think that was that. I think that was directed more at the limo driver than Mrs. McMahon. I never knew she was a dyke. No, oh, shit. I never knew she liked ladies until then. And then after that... But I, how, I don't understand how you found out at that point she was into women. Um, well, because there was a lot of girls that were hanging around that shouldn't have been around. And Vince was, <laughs> Vince was doing the opposite. You know, I hate to say it <laughs> like this. But um, Buck Rovley, uh, not Buck Rovley, uh, Buck Zumoff, remember him? Unfortunately. We don't, we don't do it like that. But, um, yeah, he, he had to go. He's in jail. He had sex with his, I think she was 14 at the time, his yeah. daughter. And, and, again, I'm going to say this. Mine, that was a hack job. I never said I wanted to be with my daughter. You almost caused her to kill herself. It was all of her friends, all of her friends were calling her like, you wanted to fuck your daddy? You... They loved me. One of the biggest joys in my life ever was after I met her and she said, Daddy, she was 23 because she was given away by Wendy, who I loved to death, but God damn it, gave my kid away when I was, you know, when, when, when she was a baby. Mm -hmm. But she picked a great family. She did everything right. She didn't want to raise Bianca in the environment she got raised in, which was hood projects and she didn't want to do that which I said I got money that's when I was making 250 mm -hmm. thou a year and and yeah I got money why would you you know but she but she couldn't find me you know we, she tried and the reason I knew she was telling the truth because one time Undertaker's daddy uh, dad had a um, something went wrong like a heart attack or whatever I don't mm -hmm. know what it was but they had to take him off and they switched me from Chicago to another town she's Detroit and she drove down because I was announced to be on the Chicago, and I wasn't there, you know, because they had sent me to fill in for Taker. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so I knew she was telling the truth to know that. Only people that were there would have known that. And, you know, and she, she gave her up to, for adoption because she didn't want to. And she went through a tough time. Uh, Wendy, Wendy was very smart. I met her at a strip club. Uh, she was the only black girl dancing and tons, 3,000 a week, if not more, and probably more at times. Because every, everybody white wanted to mess with a black girl. And she had a hella body, she was pretty. You know, so everybody's trying to, you know, get that. Mm -hmm. They're trying to get that. And, and so she was, and she was smart. She wasn't just a damn stripper, like, I can't do nothing else but spin on this pole. Um, nah, she invested it. She's got horses now. She's, wow. she's, a, she's a horse trainer, race, Good race for horse. Her. Yep, yep. And, but, but a friend, just like with me, a friend ripped her off a lot of money on an investment. Oh. And she went back to zero. And she had to move down to Miami. And we were, um, it was me and uh, Pat, uh, no, me and Sean, we were pulling into the Miami Arena. The old one that was right dead center hood, they stopped running that because people were getting raped. Um, when I say people were getting raped, me and, me and uh, Tanaka and me and Sean had some girls coming down that, that didn't make it. And we found out later, we got mad, like, God damn, fuck you. You, you know, you're like Katie. Katie's my Boston girl that kind of flaked off on me. Um, but they got raped, and it wow. was a police report. They got right there in front of the arena. That's how bad the area was. Jordan was still was coming to the arena, going, you know, it, it was around back. You pull through the gates and you're, you, know, you come in the back entrance. George Elm was still right when he got to the corner. They, it was Christmas time. And they had packages in the back. Mm -hmm. And somebody punched, broke the window, reaching in and getting packages. He reached back and grabbed our arm and, and gunned it. He drug them into where the police were at, you know, because the police were inside that parking lot area. 
I thought you were going to say George Steele was raped. No, no. All right, good. <laughs> no, but, it, but, but still, he dragged him. He had him by the arm. You know, most of us were probably like, ah, fuck, shit, come on, man. No, George grabbed him and <laughs> gunned it and drugged her I, ass. See, I really liked him. Yeah, I do too, man. Tony Atlas hates him, but I like George Steele an awful lot. Tony hates a lot. Yeah. Why does he hate? He claims that Steele uh, played snitch on him. He was one. You know what Davy Boy Smith did to him one time? But he was one Tony. Was to a, not Tony, to a... a Steele? Yep. Yeah. George. I, yeah. Steele throws me off. Oh, George. No, don't do that again. All right. You do what you want. You've changed. But so um, <laughs> we was up in Toronto or Montreal. I think Toronto was Canadian. I really don't like Canada anymore because y'all y'all suck ass. Mm -hmm. Y'all, I do. I got friends there. Hell yeah, a lot of them in Winnipeg um, and Toronto. I mean, Winnie's from Toronto. Mm -hmm. Winnie's the one who was got accidentally involved in that murder case that didn't happen. Oh, yeah. She was her pictures on there. She's a model and an actress. She goes to acting shoots every day. Wow. And just an extra at this point. Mm -hmm. And then one stupid damn thing by me. Now she's all over the world. <laughs> she, yeah, you wanted attention. <laughs> but back to George. Um, he, he, I don't, I don't know why, because I love him to death, but, um, they, and Davy Boy is like my cat Swaggy. He just likes to play, you know, ribs yeah. and shit. And, you know, George, George had a colostomy, you know, that yeah, thing yeah, you wear yeah, on your side. Unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. And, um, Davy and him had had a little fallout. And I th I'm going to go with Toronto. I think it was Toronto. But, um, we were in the dressing room. George walks in. Davy walks up and hugs him. I love you, George. I'm sorry about everything. And we're all like, well, that's a nice ending, you know, because we're worried that they, you know, if it came down physical. I mean, George was a bad boy, but he was older, you know, and, and Davey's still fresh. He's still, you know, so we're, we're like, I hope it never comes to that. But um, Davey hugged him. We're all like, oh, that was the nicest. Oh, thank God it ended that way. And then George is walking around giving, you know, telling the guys to finish. He had a white shirt on, like a button, button up. Oh, by the way, I'm sporting my Braves. And I got to wear the same shit every week because we, we do 300 tapings a day. 306. 306 tapings a day. But so Davey, when he hugged him, he had a little damn pin and he popped that bag. <laughs> <laughs> and shit was was coming was dripping down. And he didn't him. realize it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and poor George, man, he start walking around with like little breath freshener thing, and you'd be talking to him, and he go, quish, quish. <laughs> you know, because because he knew when he was shitting, he he'd be shitting talking to you, but it was coming out like right here mm -hmm. into a bag. But Davy 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 hugged him, made <laughs> made up, popped his bag. <laughs> he had a white shirt, you know, dress shirt. And it was like a damn stream of, of brown. <laughs> well, I guess he had an axe to grind and yeah. used a pin instead. You know. <laughs> you can't make that up. But no, I like George Steele an awful lot. Oh, I love him. him. Yeah. He's gone, you know. It's another one. It's, it's, another, it's sad, you know. He's the one that said At least he was, a, you know, a senior when he passed. But, you know, yeah, at least that, sad yeah. to hear. You know, you know, Bad News was only 53. And I was like 40. Are you sure about that? No, but I was 40. Yeah, pretty sure. Why don't you Google, you want to bet? I don't want to bet, but I thought he was kind of older when he was even in WWF. You want to bet? Yeah, he was. He was and he but, passed, I think I remember when he passed. If I remember right, he passed in March of 07. March. Or at least the winter of 07. But, March. So let me think. If Patrick. No. Yeah. That would if he was fifty three when he passed. That fifty six at the most, and I'll tell you why. Because when I, I was younger, I was forty, and you know all the guys were dying, and I saw fifty three. I think it was fifty three, and I thought, well, he's a little bit older, you know, because you feel so sad with all the guys dying at forty and thirty and shit. It was fifty, so you you almost like well, he he got a pretty good amount of life in, you know. Um, but then I started thinking about myself. And that's what you that's what happens when all your friends are dying left and right and left and right you start thinking hmm 
<laughs> when's mine? You know, and uh, luckily for me, you know, I'm still around. I, I think I'm going to be around for, what am I now, 60, 70, 80? 60. 60. I think I'm going to be around 40 more, maybe 45 more years. Um, Making but, a nice even 100. But when cars swerve at me when I'm riding my bike and I have to run off the road, anything can happen. Yeah. <laughs> anything can happen. Yeah. Well, Marty, I tell you, very interesting episode here. Again, we didn't get too much. Are we into done? End of 1989, yeah. We're going to wrap it. We're going to take we it home. We didn't talk about nothing. Well, we talked about a lot. It's almost like Seinfeld, the show about nothing. But no. we had some interesting <laughs> conversations nonetheless. When we come back with the, the fresh batch of episodes, we're going to dive into Royal Rumble 1989. Your first, well, no, that would be your second pay-per-view, but the first time the Royal Rumble was on pay-per-view. So that's kind of interesting, too, down in yeah, the, but you have to remind me. the Houston Summit. Oh, don't worry. I'll jog you through it, wrestling fans. Again, we thank you for joining us. If you're on the live chat we have during the premieres, that gray super chat button is open. Click it. Help us out. Help keep wrestling legends working. Give and, us and see if y'all can find my phone. And see if you can find his phone. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free. The Patreon, we're welcoming new subscribers for less than a cup of coffee at Starbucks. The eBay has great merchandise available for the holidays. For Marty Gennetti, I'm Dan. What's a Patreon? Patreon. Yeah. That is the service that fans can join where they can get early access to the shows before they're available on Thursday. They get them without any oh, kind like of advertisement on it. What's that? Like a cheat sheet? It's like a, it's a video service, but you have to be a member to access it. You heard? You heard. Help keep Marty, Tony Atlas, and other great wrestling legends working. That's what it's all about. The eBay's got great merchandise for the holidays. With the holidays comes a ninth annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks toy thing, drive. One thing wrong. And that means a one lot. What's wrong. that now? This is Party with Marty. Yeah. I ain't had one beer. You did good today. Well, I didn't want to do good. <laughs> <laughs> all right, wrestling fans. For Marty Gennetti, I'm Dan Marotti. We'll see you Tuesday night with Tony Atlas. We'll see you next Thursday. It's Potty with Marty Wrestling Inside is no Marty Gennetti. You and yours stay healthy, be well. And keep rocking. Wrestling fans, we explode into Christmas for the ninth annual Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest. A human sea of superstar guests have come to MWF Studios for live interviews, tributes, and virtual autograph signings. The good news is if you miss these superstar signings, we have individual autograph photos available as well as all-inclusive VIP packages throughout the season. If you want them for yourself or to give us a holiday gift for Christmas, get the order in by December the 19th. On Christmas night, we'll reveal the winner of the massive Christmas week mega raffle where one lucky fan wins an entire jackpot of prizes again to benefit the Paul Bearer Holiday Headlux Toy Drive. 2020 has been a brutal year for the economy as well as our toy drive efforts. We could use any and all the help you could give us. Peapot! of the professional wrestling community. If you're going to take part in any toy drive this year, let it be one where we update Santa Claus's GPS in honor Paul Bearer's memory. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com now.